Praise the Lord, you are tuning into the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. This ministry is designed to bring forth revelation and encouragement and to enlighten your minds. Now listen as the woman of God brings you revelation from the word of God. God bless you today. This is Apostle Barbara Thomas coming your way on today. We thank God for what he's doing in this day and hour. We thank him on today because his power is being revealed in the midst of every situation, in the midst of the circumstances that you're going through. We're excited because the power of God is being revealed. We want to encourage you on today as we get ready for the debut on today of the Barbara R. Thomas talk show. I thank God. I thank God. Hallelujah. Because he is doing great things on our behalf. And I'm thankful even for my co-host on today that will be with me on today and many other days, Apostle Vanessa R. Brooks. I'm telling you, God is really doing something in this day and hour, in this time and in this season, and he is using the voices of those that have experience and wisdom and understanding to help the people of God to understand exactly what they need to know concerning their life and concerning their walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're going to be dealing with some subjects that may seem very controversial to those that are not kingdom minded because we're going to deal with some things uh, my God that, that is going to enlighten the people that's going to open up your understanding. We're going to deal with some things that we see as errors in the body of Christ. We're going to be dealing with those kind of subjects on this talk show. And so I want those of you that want higher understanding, higher learning, I want you to tune in as we, the people of God, me and the woman of God, hallelujah, come forth during these times and during this season. So I thank God for you, Bless Apostle, you. for joining me Bless on you. today. Bless I know you. God is doing a great work with you Amen. and he's really using you really mightily in this excuse me, in this day and hour to mm -hmm. really bring some understanding and clarity to some things. I, I I know that the Lord is speaking to you very heavily in this hour. And just for a few months, minutes before I go into our subject for the day, I want you to tell the people of God what God is really saying in this hour that we need to do mm -hmm. to get in a place to where we'll be able to not be caught up in all the compromise and errors and the different things that are going on right now in the body of Christ. The Lord has been speaking uh, very expressly in my spirit concerning restoration uh, to the body of Christ, to his kingdom. And what's going to have to happen is we're going to have to submit ourselves, apostles, yes. to what he told me this morning, deep wells of teaching. Right. The Lord said to me this morning, he said, let the people know that the teaching has been less than surface. It's been less than shallow. Right. And the Bible teaches us that people perish for a lack of knowledge. Right. And so a lot of things we've learned, hello somebody, we've learned how to church. A lot of people have not gone into the word of God, have not began to seek the Lord for understanding, for clarity, for revelation, right. for downloads. And so we're doing things in our own rightness, in yes. our own likeness. And so God is calling us back to a time of complete submission to the word. God is calling leaders uh, to take their position as teachers yes. and to begin to teach the people of God, to disciple them, to shepherd them, because if not, that blood is required on our hands. Yes. And so it's a time now for learning. Yes. It's a time now for learning. And this is what the Lord has been just so heavily putting on my heart. To give uh, opportunity for the people to hear some deeper understanding mm -hmm. and deeper revelations mm -hmm. of the word of God and the things that are taking place uh, in the body of Christ that are so off sync yes. with what the Lord is saying and doing. And so on today, we're going to talk about a subject that's probably going to cause some of you to kind of cringe. Yes. Uh, that's going to probably cause some of you to be upset uh, because we take titles and different things a lot of times and, and make an idol out of our titles. Yes. We make idols out of them in, in order to try to get respect and different things. But we as the people need to understand 
the origin, even of where things come from That's in right. this hour. We need to have an understanding of it. We need to understand what we're saying. We even need to understand uh, the different methods that people are using That's right. uh, in this day and hour. So we're going to talk about the spirit of civil, the properties. Oh we're going to talk about that on today. Oh and we want you, get your pens and papers. Come on. You need to have an understanding. I want you to write on today and write this down, study it so that you can get in a place uh, where you can get an understanding more so of what you're saying you're walking in. You can see the error of some things that have been taught to you that made you think that it was spiritual when it was really demonic. And we're going to talk about uh, those things on today. So I brought the woman of God on on today as my special guest and co-host. Hallelujah. But she's going to be my special guest today. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that we can really talk about this uh, on today. So uh, Apostle uh, Brooks, the, 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 the title prophetess, oh my. we really want to get into that because we got so many people just hanging on to that so mm -hmm. heavily. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one thing the Lord dealt with me about, uh, and 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 when you when you get an understanding That's of right. things, and God begins to open your eyes, and you know because we all have error in that. Absolutely, we have an error in that. But He began to talk to me about that real heavily, and as I did some research on it, I began to see. Um, that we have made some errors and some things. And so on today, I want you to get into it a little bit about uh, that title, Prophetess. Well, I want to say to your audience on today that uh, what God is calling for from us is a spirit of humility. Yes. Right? And if we're going to grow, we're going to have to humble ourselves and acknowledge that we are wrong. I've used the title, Prophetess, before many, yes. many, many, many times, Okay. And so uh, you have to first acknowledge that I'm wrong in order for God to bring clarity to your spirit. So you're going to have to humble yourself. And I'm not suggesting on today that you can't use the term prophetess in 2017. If that's what you want to use, use that. But what I am suggesting is that you need to use it with knowledge. Right. Okay? Right. And then let the Holy Spirit guide you. Um, I'm training my spirit to, to not use it. Right. And it's taken some time because we've used it for so long. Yes. But I choose not to. So I want to just set it up by saying quickly, uh, the Bible, when, when Jesus gave the what we call the fivefold gifts, they're really the ascension gifts. Right. When Jesus gave those to the church, we, we need to look at that. He never, he never gave the church prophetesses. Right. He said I gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers, some evangelists. All right. So we need to look at where this came from. Now, the first thing that some of you may be saying is, well, Apostle, the Bible talks about prophetesses. There's the prophetess Deborah. There's the prophetess Anna. I'm going to get in trouble. Yeah. Early. You must understand that there are some translation issues even in the Bible. Right. Okay, that's the first thing. And I'm going to get in even more trouble. You must also understand that even in the Bible, you have to remember Although these men of God and these women of God were under the inspiration of the Lord, you must understand that many of them were connected to tainted ministries as well. Right. Okay? They didn't have the information that we have today. So when you, when you study the Bible, you find out that they did something called um, oracle teaching, where, where, right. where trainings were passed down from generation to generation. So we didn't, they didn't have all of the research that we have today. So even some of the prophets in the Bible were connected to some divination. Yes. I know. I know. Yes. Even some of the prophets that you read about, all right, were connected to divination, witchcraft, sorcery, because they were introduced to this sort of um, cult-like worship themselves, which is why God, one of the reasons why God sent Jesus. Right. That's one right. of the reasons God sent Jesus. Right. God sent Jesus to purify all of that tainted religion, all right, that was handed down in Jewish culture. So right. we need to just go ahead and get delivered. Um, the Bible is a wonderful book, but it is a book that's problematic in some regard if you don't understand that. Right. Okay. Etymology is important to the church. Okay. So we need to know the origin of words. Prophetess. I used to research it. The first thing I found out was that it was, it was the word for simple. 
Right. So let me explain what these civil prophetesses were. They were actually uh, rooted in not just paganism. It, it's even deeper than that. Yes. These women had divine supernatural power. Right. Now, I want y'all to hear me today because we think today because we see people who operate in divine supernatural power, we assume that they are of the Lord. You must understand that there are all kinds of deities, okay? Yeah. Now, I want you to write this word down. It's C-H-T-H-O-N-I-C, because that is the origin of the civil prophetess, okay? Right. It means, literally, it means subterranean. It means spirits of the underworld below the earth's surface, okay? So these were gods and goddesses who lived underground. So they were marine goddesses, sea goddesses, earth goddesses. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yes. And they had power to heal. They had power to prophesy. Yes. They even casted out opposing spirits. Okay? So they had all those supernatural powers. Here's where you got to be careful with this, with this spirit, because they were so powerful that the, the people began to set them beside the male prophets in that day, right. because actually these women had more power oh. than these men. And that's where the test came from. There was already male prophets, so to speak, who was yes. operating, but then these civil prophets, these civil gods, and they're really high priestesses. They began to manifest in a greater power than the men. And they actually began to become, uh, uh, overpower the men. And the men were trying to submit to them. To them. And let me just interject right in there. This is the problem, too, that we're seeing in the body right now. Where the women are being used prophetically. But they're, they're coming against the men mm -hmm. to cause them to dummy down mm -hmm. to their, their power. Now, the good, the, the good thing that she just pointed out was these women had more power than these men. Mm -hmm. and, and the other part was she wanted you to really get in was they were mar marine. So they were of the marine kingdom. And as I was researching, I found that they dwelt among the rocks yes. toward the water. Yes. So they were that. And they thought they, they were some special god that came up out of the sea yes. uh, and used that. So that right there, people of God, we got to be careful. Uh, especially when we, and I'm noticing this spirit real heavy right now in the body of Christ where women are walking in the prophetic and they are really challenging the men in a very heavy way and they are really causing the men to feel less and they're thinking they're something better but it's rooted in the spirit civil civil that's the prophetess, that's the prophetess <laughs> is rooted in that so i wanted to hit that in there the other thing is a lot of you prophets are spending a lot of time in the cave yes i need you to come out what you must understand is this spirit of, of the, the civil prophetess, they, they spent all of their time in the cave yes. because they were earth prophets. Yes. And so we think that it's anointed. We think it means that we're anointed because we're in the cave. That's the trick of the enemy. I need you guys to come out of the prof, out of the cave. Okay. Yes. I wanted to put that in. The other thing that's really dangerous about this spirit, and I'm going to get in even more trouble. Okay. These prophets, these prophetesses, they operated in what the historians called a static frenzy. There you go. Now this is, I need you to hear me today. This is something that's prevalent in today's church. Yes. And we gotta, we gotta get delivered from it. These women would go into a, 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 a static state of mind and they would go into a frenzy with their prophetic utterance. Right. They would shake and they would shiver their heads would turn, they would foam at the mouth, they would go into trances, yes. they would become almost in a mad, like delusional state of mind. We think that it's anointed today. Yes. We, but we need to understand it's coming from a very demonic, possessed realm. 
which is why a lot of people we know who claim to be prophetic, I'm going to get in trouble. Actually, they have mental problems because yes. their spirit is connected to you. And what you really need is deliverance. Yes. Okay, These prophetesses, they would jerk. They would slither. I see a lot today, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 you know, a lot of this body slamming that's going on today, right. uh, pushing people at the altar. I'm going to get in so much trouble. The, the throwing up. Yes. Oh my God. We think that's deliverance. A lot of that is a, is a manifestation of this particular spirit. It's time for us to be delivered. Okay. It's time for us to be set free. These prophetesses. I'm going to get them so much trouble here. They use the power they had to be seductive. Right. And so that's why as female prophets, when we are, when God is going to use you, you're going to have to be very careful in how you prophesy. I'm not into the, you know, dress codes. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I believe in liberation. But when God is using you to prophesy, you need to cover up your body. Yes. You need to try to practice being still. Yes. Praise the Lord. You need to be careful with your hands and your eyes. You, I'm going to get in trouble, Apostle. Yes. You need to tone down the makeup Yes. when you're prophesying. Go online and research civil prophets. They were very, very seductive. Very. All right? So not only did they seduce the men. They seduced the women. Okay. They seduced the women. All right? And, they, and, and the thing about the civil prophets, they were accurate. Okay, but you must understand they were seeking deities that were not the Holy Spirit for their information. Okay, and so they were consulting with these sea gods and these earth gods and these rock gods to get information about people that was right, but they was doing it in order to grab control of that vessel, right. in order to manipulate, intimidate, and bring these people under control. I'm gonna get in trouble again, but I'm trying to help somebody. So these people that they would minister to would go into trance-like states. Right. And once they were able to put people in a trance, Apostle, yes. they could get into their mind, yes. all right, and use hypnosis, mind control. That's why some of you, I'm going to get in trouble. That's why some of you can't break free from certain ministries. That's why some of you know that you're being, that you're in a false ministry. You know that you're connected to cults. You know that you're connected to, to strange fight, but you can't seem to break free. It's because when they were ministering to you, unbeknownst to you, they got you in a, in a trance-like state, and they hypnotized you, and they were able to grab complete control of your mind. Yes. Okay? And so you need to go and seek heavy deliverance. Yes. That's why some of you are taking on the form of the person that's prophesying to you, that's in your life because that thing has transferred and it has connected to you. I just want to hear the check. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> because this is what we're seeing. We're hearing people, uh, and this is why you hear me say a lot of times, don't compare me to anyone else. Right. Because a lot of times people think that means something special. For you to hear someone say you're just like someone else when you prophesy, when you do this. And you'll notice that a person uh, take on the mannerism, even how they project the words, how they present the prophecies, yes. everything. They'll take on that mannerism and begin to act like that person. And we think that that is something so good when in fact it's just like she said that the uh, apostle said that you have gotten your mind taken over by the person that is prophesying to you. That's why it's so dangerous for you to be running here, there, That's everywhere, right. That's right. trying to get a prophetic word uh, and trying to be up under uh, someone that said they're prophetic. One thing that I've noticed, and, and I've been, and, and yeah, we're going to get in trouble on this wrong mm -hmm. end. I've been noticing too, and we were talking about it, and, and the woman of God had asked me a question even coming on here. But I have watched a lot of the women, especially on Facebook, where they call themselves prophetess, but they only have pictures with their eyes only. Yes. I've been watching that yes. real carefully. The Lord had me watch that. Mm -hmm. He said it's because their eyes carry seduction yes. in it. And yes. it's to lock you into their eyes. Yes. And through the, through the spirit realm, which is what people need to understand, through the spirit realm, yes. they're using their pictures 
to lock you into them, yes. uh, to make you become uh, enslaved to them. And that's why you find yourself having to draw yourself to whatever they're saying, mm -hmm. whatever they're doing, and everything, because they lock you into that. And so he told me to tell the people, as we, were, as we do it today, he told me to make sure you tell the people to watch the people that when they send you stuff, they only want to send you their eyes and nothing else. This is how they're getting you, because they're using their eyes a lot to get you, because that's how you get hypnotized. Exactly. This is how you get hypnotized. And you find yourself, like you said, in a trance-like state. Don't know what happened to you. You come yes. out of you trying to figure out what happened to you. Yes. It's because they have captured your mind, yes. just like you said. Absolutely. So y'all be careful of that. Now, here's another thing I want to share with us today that I'm going to get in a little bit of trouble for. Um, first of all, um, this particular spirit will, will connect to uh, the younger yes. prophetesses, but it also will connect to the older and in fact, it's even more powerful in the older prophetesses. Yes, so you need to be really, really careful. Now, I want to read this to you guys. This was in uh, the lexicon, and this was also in uh, some of the Bible dictionaries and, uh, and encyclopedias that I study. Yes. Uh, because the black church needs to be extremely careful. The black prophets, the black female prophets, need to be extremely careful yes. for 6,000 years of power. Yes. Africa, our native land, was ruled by civil Simple. matriarchs. Yes. So see, we already are connected to that spirit by way of our heritage and our lineage, by way of our ancestors and our forefathers. All right. So see, there's a soul tie there. There's a generational soul tie yes. that need to be cut off right there just by way of what we or who we are connected to so for six thousand years all right africa the motherland yes was ruled now when i studied further i found out this is so powerful apostle the african civil matriarchs actually helped to birth out i'm gonna get in trouble the roman catholic church yes they did so a lot of the catholicism that we try to introduce and bring into our churches today is heavily rooted and influenced by the civil spirit. Okay? So we need to be extremely careful. And right in there, when I was researching uh, and went back in it about the capitalism, yes. the bishops yes. of the Catholic Church yes. were ruled by civil. They were ruled by them. And so we really need to be careful. They, they, the uniforms yes. and different things yes. are rooted from that, from that spirit. and it's from witchcraft. from witchcraft. It's from witchcraft, and that's why the, that's why y'all just we love you today. But that's why the bishops' garments look the way they look. Right. All right. That priest, that priest look. But you got to also understand, even though you read the Bible and you see that we had the priest in the Bible. You just understand, every religion has priests, so you, right. you can't get excited when you hear certain terminology. Every religion has prophets. Every religion has priests and high priests. Sure do. So that's why those garments that we see in today's church with the bishops and even some apostles, yes. praise the Lord, is connected to this particular spirit. And that's what these high priests used to wear in that's that right. time. That's right. It also said here that uh, this spirit was known as the Pythoness spirit. Yes. Now, when you study Acts 16, 16, that girl that had a spirit of divination that was following Paul the Apostle, she was civil. She was a civil spirit, okay? It is a Python spirit, people of God. And it's nothing for us to play with. And so you may feel like it's innocent that, you, that you're using this title, but if you haven't gone into the realm of the spirit and broke that thing off in prayer... If you haven't gone into the realm of the spirit, if you haven't gone into the realm of the spirit and broke that thing off in consecration, it's following you. Yes. And even in the Bible, when you study the Bible, they were very, very intentional about what they named their children. Yes. Because they understood the power of names and etymology and origin. But in today's church, we don't want to take the time to do the research. And so some of you must understand that spirit is connected to your ministry. That because you're using the title of prophetess and you haven't gone behind the veil, you haven't gone into the presence of God and sought him and you haven't asked God for clarity. 
you haven't repented for using that title, all right? These sea spirits, these cave spirits yes. are connected to your ministry. Lost That's spirits. why you always feel like you need to go into the cave. Some of y'all are hiding. You've been in the cave for 15 years. Every time God uses you, you say it's my cave season. That's that civil spirit yes. that wants you to go back and consult with the mother, with, with mother nature. Ooh, oh my God. She wants you shit. to consult with the earth Jesus demon, the earth it. spirit, the mm -hmm. water demons, the water spirits. You have to be educated today. It's not enough that your gift is right. The Bible said, this is how you identify real prophecy. Revelation said that it is the testimony of Jesus Christ right. that is the spirit of prophecy. All right. So if what you are prophesying is not connected to the testimony of Christ, oh then you are God. prophesying out of a vain realm. Yes. You are prophesying out of a dangerous realm that is connected to this spirit. And we as female apostles and prophets, we have to be careful on today. Yes. All right. Because our presentation even will bring people under a seductive state. Yes. All right. We have people now who are in love with prophets, who are who are in awe with prophets. We have people now who who are obsessed with prophets. That you guys go from conference to conference to conference to conference. You let I'm gonna get in trouble. You're letting people activate you over the weekend. Ooh, God, God, who you have no relationship Ooh, with Jesus. because you just saw them on a Facebook video or you saw their video on TV. And so you go to these conferences and you don't even understand these people. Oftentimes they are connected to this matriarchal spirit yes. called Sybil. I'm gonna get in trouble. That's why a lot of women are not getting married. That's it. Because she doesn't marry. She don't want you to be married. She don't want it. I told all my daughters, y'all gonna be married. You're not gonna travel behind me mm -hmm. single. You need to go find a husband. Have let the husband find you. I'll put it that way. But that spirit of simple doesn't want you married. This is why a lot of you as women of God, I hear it, apostle, all the yes. time. They don't even want to be married. No. I'm happy being single. That is a spirit that's coming from Sybil, Sybil. the prophetess. All right, yes. because she wants you to have a Jezebel like spirit where you're controlling men, where you're controlling your female leaders. You're, oh, come on, somebody. You're controlling your sisters. That is this spirit, and we need to get delivered from it today. And somebody has got to be bold enough to tell us the truth on today. Yes. Okay. This, this spirit has so captivated the women uh, in this hour. Yes. And. What I'm finding that when you begin to try to tell them that they're under the influence of something besides the spirit of the Lord, they will absolutely rise up against you in a reign of terror That's frenzy. to try to destroy you, your yes. name, your reputation. Yes. This is why we have as, as women that are women, the women prophets. Mm -hmm. This is why the female prophets, when they see another uh, female prophet being used mightily by God mm -hmm. and they see their influence, this is why they go on the attack against each other yes. because they are saying you're challenging us and I'm the one and that matriotic spirit and, and, and it is through the older women that it is taught to the That's younger. Right. So we have to be very careful right now. Uh, when I say it's a captivating spirit, it's a captivating spirit. As I studied it, I, I just politely said, I, I'm, you know, and like the apostle said, we're training ourselves not to even use that word, period, because we know where it stems from and we know what it, you know, just like you said, we, and we have not denounced the connection That's right. and we have not denounced the spiritual soul tie, the lineage. And we've been taught by people that taught us this kind of witchcraft. Yes. They taught us this. They taught us that we supposed to do it a certain way. We supposed to present a prophecy a certain way. That's right. And this is why we have such a fight right now because you can just flat, just stand and give a word of prophecy without even saying, you know, going into all all that deep that we say we got to go That's into. Right. You right. can just speak. Right. The pro word of prophecy is what's coming out of your mouth, not your presentation That's and right. how you do it. That's and right. so this has been taught, especially like you say in the black church. And this is why over in Africa, you see them as they get ready to prophesy. They go into these frenzy because mm -hmm. they're still connected to that spirit. And it has been brought because it's our ancestry. 
Come on. Absolutely. This is our lineage, and this is what we, we learned, and this is what we have been doing. But we're coming to let you know today, when you know better, you do better. We're not trying to, to try to mess you up, but we're trying to get you in a place of understanding so that you can understand what you are connecting yourself to Absolutely. and proudly displaying and saying, and, and you're trying to figure out why. Like she said, you having all these attacks and everything, and even why you proper. That part about the cave. When mm -hmm. God showed me that they were cave dwellers, yes, yes, th yes. that's why I, t I said one day, even on Facebook, you need prophets, it's time to come out of the cave. Yeah. Because like she said, this is where the enemy takes you back in yes. and reintroduces you yes. to those spirits so you can continue to operate thinking that you're working miracle signs and wonders from God when in actuality, your source is demonic. demonic. So we have to be careful. The other thing I want to talk about was uh, when I was studying something called querence. Yes. Now, this is for the people on the other side. This is for y'all that are going seeking out information from these prophetesses. Yes. Yes. It's modern day fortune telling. And, and so what happens is you're going to prophets or who you think are prophets and you're asking them questions. Am I going to get married this year? Yeah. Am I going to get a, a job this year? Yes. What do you see in my future? Do you have a word? I'm going to get in trouble. Do you have a word for my life? Yes. Is, is, is God saying anything to you about me? See, you got to be careful with that spirit. It's called querence, Q-U-E-R-E-N-T-S. And they are attracted to the civil spirit. Write it down. Write that down. So for those of y'all that are following these prophetesses all over Facebook, all right, and you're all in their inboxes, and you're going to all their events and you're hopping on all their lives and you're wanting to know if there's a word from God for the, for your life, you have been attacked by this spirit of the querent, yes. all right? And, 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 and so these prophetesses are operating out of what they call an oracle spirit, all right? Where they are consulting with very, very dangerous gods and goddesses yes. getting this information about yes. you, all right? So you gotta be careful because it's like a modern day crystal ball. Yes. That's being used. And this is why we're not seeing the pow the real power of God right. in the body of Christ to change and deliver. All right. This is why some of you get a temporary deliverance. Yes. Because this spirit will never let you be free. This spirit will never let you have permanent deliverance. And this is why some of you go to the event. You go to the conference, you get the laying on of hands, and you think that you're free. And as soon as it's over, you're right back in that same place again. Prophetesses, that spirit does not want you to be free. Sybil, that demon, does not want you whole, does not want you in relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. So rarely are they going to introduce you to Christ. Rarely. All right, you must understand that this is a strong spirit and it was in the earth realm before Christ ever manifested. So again, when you read the Old Testament, you're going to see a lot of influence from this spirit even in the yes. Old Testament. Yes, yes. So y'all got to get delivered from just thinking because I see it in the Bible that means I can do it. Right. Because some of you right. are like, you're reading Bible st stories and then you're thinking that it's okay to repeat what you're studying because you see it there. You don't understand. This is why Paul the Apostle when God called him as a, into the apostleship, he went away for 14 years because yes, he had to get did. all that stuff rooted yes, out of him. Oh my yes. God. He had to get that stuff rooted out yes. of him. Okay? Because he had been connected to spirits like this. And this is one of the reasons why Paul the apostle was persecuted because he began to reestablish the woman's ministry. Yes. Under yes. the headship of Christ. Christ. Okay? So a lot of you really need to go and seek deliverance. And it's okay. Okay, it, it's all right. It's nothing to be ashamed about. But what I am going to say is after today that the Lord has imparted this knowledge into your spirit. And I can't teach you everything in 30 minutes, but we're giving you enough that you can go now and get more research or you can find a teacher to help you. But you now have the responsibility from God himself to get delivered. And I'm going to say something. Those of you who are using this title prophetess, you need to go seek the Lord. For a minute, it might be okay to shut your ministry down yeah. for just a minute, okay? And you need to find out, am I a prophet of Jesus Christ? Right. 
or am I a prophetess for real? Right. Because some of you all are prophetesses for real, which means you need deliverance. Yes. If you are a prophet of God, you don't need the test. The Lord told me this morning, he said, tell them, it's not a gender assignment. No, it's not. So you don't have to try to identify yourself by saying I'm a prophetess. All right. Remember, they only called those women prophetesses in the in the in in, in all those years ago because they were they were out doing the men. Yeah. Yes. And they were trying to let people know uh, it's when they were scheduling their appointments. Yes. So they would schedule with the prophetess and not the male prophet. Right. Because right. they they wouldn't know ahead of time which one they would see. It, it was like when I studied there, they they had these shrines. And that's what they had. They had several, and they called them uh, they called them prophetic it's centers. Just, all right, so they had these shrines and they had these centers, and you could go into the town that day and you could sign up to see a prophet. Right. If you wanted to see a female, you'd have to sign up to see the prophetess. Yes. Word got out that the women prophets had more power, oh, yeah. had more authority, and so that's why they gave them the test. To separate them from the male prophets. Yes. All right. So if you are a real prophet of God, you don't need tests to identify your calling. I just want to make it clear today. Yes. I want you to understand why they added tests on to the yes. end of it. So even Deborah, <laughs> even she didn't understand why they called her prophetess. Right. Anna, even because remember, Anna the prophetess, she was already a prophet before Jesus Christ. Right came right. she was 90 years old in the temple waiting for jesus to come yes so she was under that, that that jewish law as well so they didn't know any better either people of god they were being a lot of them were being mentored by symbols symbols and that's why jesus had to come even to save those people that's why those old testament prophets they knew christ was coming to save them from the strongholds yes. that they were connected to so don't read the bible and assume you can but everything you saw that you that you can repeat it because a lot of that stuff was in error as well. Yes. And if they really, really <gasps> will read Jesus. the Old Testament, you see that they really saw, they they were really into divination yes, and a lot of it were. that they were doing. Uh, they was throwing bones, yes. everything. Yes. You know, God ain't in that. That's right. But they they use that, and because of that. Uh, many times we will be acceptable of some things. That's right. There's a lot of things in the word that we know God was not for, was but because of the culture Come on. that they were in and because of their upbringing Jesus. and what they were taught, they did those practices. Even when the Lord told them he were against it. Come on. You should know that. Even when it came to Saul, I always remember that portion of scripture. He told him to kill and get out all the witches, but he saved the witch he had, the one. And just like Sybil, that he that this witch was able to bring up spirits. They were conjurers. That's right. Everything. So even when we're in services, we gotta be careful. When these uh, prophets get up, prophetess and whatever, get up and say, I'm calling up angels. You better find Be out careful. which angels they're calling That's up. Right. What are they connected to? Yes. Because we have to understand this, that when it comes to the Lord and prophecy, he don't need to do all that. That's right. For you to get a word from him. And so we have to have an understanding. So like the woman of God said, if you are connected, you need to really seek God as to what spirit you really came in contact with. Yes. Who really trained you? Right. And this is why it's, it's dangerous right now. Uh, these schools of prophets are yes. dangerous Talk right now. That. Because some of these schools are not built on, on. on, on Jesus Christ. Come on. Some of these schools are built on silver. Yes, yes. <laughs> because you gotta understand, they even even the governmental everybody they were coming to them yes. for advice. They ruled. They ruled. They ruled the nations. Yes. We gotta understand that, and so this is why the conflict now with the women and why the men are so intimidated. That's right. By the women because of what they operate in, and we search this thing back. Yes. Uh, we'll really find out that women, we need to, some deliverance, deliverance just for being a woman. Yes. Because there were some things that were attached to us 
just for being a woman that we need to get delivered from. Jesus. And this spirit right here is so powerful because of the seduction and the way it can captivate people's mind. It's a powerful spirit. And it takes someone that's skillful in the knowledge of it to help you get free. So you ain't going to get it free from everybody. That's right. Because everybody don't know how to handle it. And this is why we're trying to give you information so that you can get an understanding and then begin to seek God as to whether you need deliverance. This spirit right here, it, you know, when I started reading up on it, I said, good God, I went to repent myself because I know me I too. have came in contact with people that, that taught me some things yes. in error. Me too. And so I had to go to God for myself yes. about that because we look at stuff like she said. We just take it because we see it mm -hmm. and then we see something in the word. So we just think it's supposed to be true. But these people, because 6,000 years, this spirit was in, rule. was in rulership. Yes. 6,000 years, yes. this spirit has Ooh, ruled over the prophetic. 6,000 years. Y'all got to get this in your spirit. 6,000 years, this spirit has ruled over the prophetic. Jesus. So we have to be careful now what we're dealing with, who we're dealing with, and try to, when they come to you with these prophecies, especially these unsolicited prophecies people send into you, and trying to come in your inbox and, and, and text you and email you, you need to find out what spirit, because what they're trying to do is lock you into that's them. Right. And that's what that spirit does. It pipes up. It comes to lock you, squeeze you, hold you, constrict you, and keep you in bondage. If I could just, I want to focus on this one point before we end. I told you in the beginning that it is, this spirit operates in what we call a static frenzy. Yes. I want you to write that down. And I want to focus on that word frenzy for a minute. The Lord told me to just make sure I release this part. A temporary madness. Yes. And rage. These are some, these are some qualifying indicators that you can look for in the body of Christ. We have a lot of prophets who seem to think it's okay to talk smack on your Facebook status, in your in these church services. We see a lot of prophets who just seem to be angry, yes. who are releasing venom. You're teaching people to cut your haters off and to do, listen, make sure that you're not in a, a temporary state of madness, yes. okay? Make sure that your mind is not snapping on you. Prophets have to operate in the spirit of Christ, not, yes. a, not a mad state. It's said here, a frenzy to be violent, mental, or emotional. Oh, God. So a oh, lot of God. you that are in your emotions all the time and you say that you are a prophet, you have got to check that at the door. Yes. This is a spirit of Sybil. She keeps you emotional. Because why? Because she wants you to prophesy out of that realm of your emotions. The word is also connected to the psychological world, the psyche. So these are psychotic, these are psychotic prophets. Lord have mercy. All right. There's an agitation. All right. Intense, usually wild and Ooh, disorderly. Geez, so there's a lot of disorderly prophets today. Wild, don't want to submit to nobody. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, rejecting covering, rejecting leadership. Yes. Don't want to be properly commissioned. Don't want to be properly affirmed. Be careful. That is a civil spirit. So I just wanted to make sure it's a compulsive, agitating spirit. So that's why a lot of you guys are restless. Every church you go into ain't out to get you. It's a restless spirit right. that won't let you sit still because it doesn't want you to come under authority to anybody. It doesn't want you to come under authority to a disciplinary, come on, come to a on. governmental prophet, yes. to a governmental apostle. It does not want you to submit. It doesn't want you to operate in government kingdom order. It wants you to be wild and loose and disorderly so that you can expand that kingdom. I'm just trying to give you some indicators today of what might yes. be working through you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Get delivered, people of God. God love you enough on today that he will release this instruction to you. All right. And so this is your opportunity to repent before God. As Apostle said, 
I know there are some things in my own ministry that I've had to completely overhaul yes. because I did things out of ignorance. Yes. And so you're going to have to humble yourself today and say there's some things you did out of ignorance because you saw somebody else do it. Yes. All right. You was influenced by somebody else's ministry. This is a season where you're going to have to go and seek the Lord. Consult Jesus Christ for yourself. Turn your Facebook off. Turn your YouTube off. Turn the radio off. Open your word. Go in prayer. Ask God for divine revelation. Yes. Find you a prophetic coach, a prophetic instructor. Enroll in the school of the prophets that's being governed by trained prophets this is the only way that you're gonna get your deliverance people yes. of god now that blood is required at your hands yes. glory to god and it is so important that you understand that you need deliverance yes uh this is the part right here where people get and just like she said we have too many people running around here with no accountability there's nobody that can even identify your spiritual lineage right nobody that knows where you come from you just show up on the scene one day and announce that you are this prophet someone needs to be able to validate you in the earth that's order yes. uh, right there someone needs to be able to validate you to know who you are where you come from what you have been trained under what you have been trained to do this is the hour for that right now. We are in a season right now where we need to hear yes. the real prophets for real. Yes. But we're hearing too much of those influenced by civil spirit. And so this is why you have uh, people prophesying and they can't prophesy precisely. They're prophesying out of their emotions. And like you said, the account of, no accountability, just running here, there, everywhere. You going everywhere for someone to lay their hands on you. Uh, some of you have been activated about 50 oh, times Jesus. this year. Because uh, you go into every activation service that they have. And you still not nowhere near where you, where you say you're supposed to be. Everybody is not called to be a prophet. Now, the Bible says you all can prophesy. That's right. But not everybody is a prophet. And for some reason, people want the glamour of that title attached to them. Now, she said something real important. Because remember, prophets were already here and everything before. But when Jesus left, he said, I'm going to leave gifts, yes. which meant what she, just what she said. He was reestablishing yes. the offices. He was reestablishing those titles. He was reestablishing them back in the earth That's because right. they were contaminated yes. and corrupt. Yes. And they were rooted and grounded yes. in all kind of uh, principalities yes. and, and darkness. And he had to reestablish it. Uh, and, and the Bible said, he is the spirit of prophecy. Yes, so we need to understand that. So don't get caught up in the gifts. This is something that we're pounding in people. Stop looking at gifts. You better find out where that gift came from. Absolutely. And how it was developed before you just start just latching on and allowing people to impart, as they say, their spirit into you. You need to learn that. It is so important that we get an understanding of the spirit to know exactly what it is, where it came from, why it is used like it is. One thing, even in my research, uh, even uh, in the translations of, of the Bible, they did it, even though they knew that it was wrong. Right. But they did it for the same reason that they did 6,000 years ago. And that was to distinguish the male from the female when it did not have a gender attached Absolutely. to it. It is a spiritual thing, right. which means there's no, no gender attached to it. And so, but they did that to distinguish, like she said. So when you came, you wanted either you want the male or the female, mm -hmm. whichever one you wanted. So even in that, it has brought such a competition 
in the office of the prophet uh, between the males and the females. Uh, because for real, women can be more influential in certain areas. Absolutely. Uh, and and but you gotta remember, this spirit is rooted in seduction. That's right. So she's able to seduce more than the man. Right. <laughs> so this is why you have women uh, that say they're a prophet is they have a big following because this is where it's at. What else? I just want to get our men back in the body of Christ. I, I, I want the men to take their rightful place in the kingdom. Yes. And in order for this to happen, we as the women of God are going to have to humble ourselves and get back in our proper placement. Yes. Um, again, this spirit overpowers men. So this is why when you look at most churches, we're outnumbered. Right. There's way more women. Why? Because a lot of the men have noted that we as the women of God are over uh, overpowering yes that we are uh that we are not willing to be uh submitted right uh that we are uh know-it-alls that we don't uh that we they're not we're not willing to 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 be uh uh uh, uh submitted to their authority so they left the church yes okay this is why paul was talking in corinthians when people think he means a woman can't preach no, Paul was talking because there were sibyls. Yes. There were sibyls in the church of Corinth. And they had literally taken over the church. Yes. And so Paul was coming back to the church of Corinth. He had, he had already established it in set order. When he left, the pastors wrote him a letter and said, Listen, we got these women who are prophetesses, yes. who are speaking. That's why he said, Keep silence. <laughs> And some of that translation is off too. So that's what he was doing. And these men were not able to be utilized in the service because these women were taken over. Right. And this is why he said, go home and learn from your husband because you're not going to come into the church and take over. So that civil spirit is a takeover spirit. Yes. She's a takeover spirit. The other thing I was going to note is that when you study the civils, they had different sex. S-E-C-T-S. Yes. So there was a lot of competition, even among the sibyls. Yes. And this is why y'all need to stop talking about your tribes. Yes. Okay, because they had tribes too. And what that does is cause a lot of jealousy among That's the women of God. They call them tribes. Okay, because they called them tribes. Yeah. When you study, they had they had different tribes. tribes. Yeah. All right, they had the Delphi tribes, and they had the, the Pythonia tribes. So they had all these sects of, of, of sibyl prophets who were competing for the business. Yes. Because they were getting paid, y'all, to do this. And as Apostle said, these women were literally, they were running the government of their of their cities. Yes. All right. So government officials were consulting with them. And they were getting paid big money. And so it caused a lot of competition. This is why we see a lot of people hosting events. Yes. I know. I don't have no friends. It's okay. But it's, 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 I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. It's a spirit. It's not you. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Right. What happens is, so there's a prophet online or a prophet is online, and you see somebody's flyer. This is how that spirit works. And you see their event. Yes. All right? And they got this person to come in. And so that spirit says, you can have one too. Yeah. And so then you, and then you create your conference. You create your event. And you're going to try to outdo what you saw online. You're not going to tell nobody that's what you're doing. It's the spirit, it's the spirit. of competition to bring division and discord and strife among the women. Because that's how you power the world underneath us. This yes. is, come on somebody. There are spirits that live below the earth's surface. Yes. Praise the Lord somebody. And so this is why you have to be so careful and protect your spirit. One of the things, the first thing that I wrote when the Lord was talking, he said, tell them, he said, prophets, guard your inspirations. Yes. Because the prophetic ministry, it comes by way of inspiration. All right. We're supposed to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Right. But there's all kind of influences in the earth realm and below the earth realm that can inspire us. And so you have to guard all those gates today. Because if you not, if you don't, and you allow all that stuff to come in, you're going to operate in that capacity. And we're just trying to bring order and healing to the body of Christ so that the power of God can come back into the church and do what it used to do. It used to heal us. When yes. I got saved 25 years ago, yes. I got saved through the supernatural power of Jesus Christ. I didn't need the laying on of hands. I got no. saved at home. 
Okay, I didn't need prophecy. I didn't need to be activated. Right. The Holy Ghost got me off drugs. The Holy Ghost got me off the bottle. But I didn't need no outside interference. And so God want to take us back to the day where the power of God can come into the body of Christ, come into our churches, into the streets, wherever we are, and bring about a supernatural, permanent deliverance without us trying to compete with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Don't, your gift can't compete with the Holy Ghost, people of God. Not at all. And we need you to understand that today, that you have to get into a position this day. Uh, I know it stretched some of you. I know some got upset. I know. Uh, and, and that's understandable, and, and, but it's still not going to change the fact of what we said. Right. Uh, it's still not going to change that. We just need to know truth. The Thank Lord God. has been dealing. He's been dealing with, with us, telling us. This is the reason why he said, bring back the, the spirit of the teacher. Yes. Bring back the yes. spirit of the rabbi. Yes. Bring it back so that you can get the proper teaching that is necessary. Because people of God, there is too much error when it comes to the prophetic. Yes, it is. For all these schools of prophets, there is going on schools of prophecy that is taking place. For as much error as we have with this, that means that somebody is off. Jesus. And it sure is not the Lord. That's right. Somebody is off in their teaching. And we have to learn that. Anybody that directs you to be, be in tune and be enslaved to them and is not directing you toward Jesus Christ, you have to be real careful of what spirit they're operating in. Yes. We're not supposed to be so hung up on prophets that we almost make them our God yes. in that capacity. They're there just to testify about Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yes. That's all they're there to do. Whatever he stand for, wherever he was, this prophecy is surrounded about around that. Yes. Not about you telling, making them a God before them. Uh, don't listen to nobody but me. They're telling you don't even listen to the Lord. Right. So you have to be careful of that. This spirit right here, my, my. I'm say it again, 6,000 years. I want yes. that to get in your head. Yes. 6,000 years 6, before, Christ. before Christ. Before Christ. So it was here. And if you go back into Genesis, it's been here since the beginning. Yes. It's been here. Yes. It's not, listen, it's not something to be taken lightly. It's not something that you just push to the side. You have to have an understanding of knowing what this spirit is capable of doing. Listen, for those of you that feel like you got to foam at the mouth, fall on the floor, to give a prophecy, deliverance is available. Yes, it is. Deliverance is available. Yes, it, it does is. not take God throwing you on the floor. Come on. I've seen such things yes. when people say they're prophesying. They, crazy. Yes, just going crazy, head twirling around like it was going to come off their they neck. Yes. All that happening. You don't have to do all that to prophesy. You don't have to go into all that theatrics and drama. When you know better, when you get better, when you hear better, then you do better. It's time to do better yes. when it comes to the prophetic. We didn't get to cover everything, so we might, we about to do a part two. So you have to know without a shadow of a doubt that we are just here to help you to have an understanding of what he wants to do. Yes. So I want to encourage you on today. To hold on. Yes. Come on. Help is on the way. Yes. Help is here. Thank the Lord. Because God is allowing the information to come to your ears today. Yes. And from this day forward, you are held accountable Thank you, God. for what you do. Because you have the information that can help you for your deliverance. God bless you. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Barbara R. Thomas talk show on today. You be encouraged. Thank God for you, yes, Apostle, awesome. being with me. Thank God for our studio audience yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> for being with us on today. Yes. And we thank you for all you that came on and paid.
paid attention. Be blessed. Amen. Know we love you and we are concerned for your soul. Amen. Till tomorrow, be blessed. You have just finished listening to the media ministry of Apostle Barbara R. Thomas. You may write her at Apostle Barbara R. Thomas, P.O. Box 13291, Durham, North Carolina, 27709. Thank you for supporting the ministry.